Alright, well, welcome back everybody to my Space Engineers Beginner's Guide. This is episode 12. And if you recall last episode, I was talking about creating blueprints uh, to store and record your constructions so that you can then load them up into other games, um, whether it be in a creative game where you can literally just paste them in, or a survival game where you can actually build them up um, as if you were constructing it yourself, but you're uh, projecting the final uh, item, and then you're just welding it up with uh, the available components in your inventory. And I said we'll, we'll um, see about building a mining ship uh, via a blueprint as opposed to actually constructing it like we did for um, our little scout here. So first of all we need to set up a blueprint projector um, so that we've got something to actually work from. Now one thing that I forgot to mention last episode was that the projectors will only project a type of blueprint that is the same as the type of grid that it is part of. For example, a small blueprint projector will only project blueprints for small grids, whereas a large blueprint projector, which would go on something like this base or a large large vessel, it will only display large um, saved blueprints. Uh, it, you can't use a large projector to project a small ship, for example, or a small projector to project a large ship or station. So it is very much d dependent upon the type of um, projection you're wanting to use as to which projector you're setting up. In this case, we are wanting a small ship, uh, very similar to this, small as in small grid. So we need to start, as I mentioned, with some landing gear. Uh, actually, first of all, let's start up, just get a blank screen. I'm just going to clear some of these things off the screen. There we go. We need to set up our toolbars. So let's find an empty toolbar. No, not that one. Actually, no, we'll start a scratch from there. G to bring up our toolbar config. Right click to remove them. Now we'll need some tools. So we'll need a welder and a grinder. We'll need, honestly, we won't actually need any of these. Oh, no, yes, we will. To set up our projector, we'll need some small blocks. We will need a landing gear. We'll need a small reactor. We could also use a battery or a solar panel, but at the moment it's not time, so um, that might be a bit of a problem. And we need a projector. I think that's pretty much all we need at this stage to get started. So, we need, first of all, our landing gear. And we need to, oh, let's just put it here somewhere. This is going to be the sprue. Well, this is going to be the sprue. This is going to be the connector that we will build our projection off. That we can then disconnect, chop away later once we're finished building. So we're going to give ourselves plenty of room. Hopefully that's going to be plenty. So we'll 
line our project based our projection based on that. Now I'm not even gonna weld them up actually. Don't actually need to weld them up, so we'll just put in no, that one. We'll put in that and we're going to Alright. This is going to be a bit of fun because yes. One of the most confusing things is the big version. We'll actually look at the big version bits and it's easier to demonstrate what I'm talking about. One of the most confusing things about a projector is orientation. How do you know what is the front, what is the back, what is the top, bottom, left and right? Now, if we have a look, it looks pretty much the same all around, with one notable exception in this case. This face here facing us. You notice it's got the two bars, top and bottom, that, that come down into the white circle, whereas these don't have that. Okay, now, my terminology is probably wrong, and I don't know which way around this goes, but those two bars on that face, it's either the front or the back. I can't remember exactly which one it is, but that is our front-back orientation marker. Uh, now, I make it a habit of putting that to the back, it may not be, I can't say for certain it is. But how do we know whether we've got it up the right way? Because if we look at this, it could be any way up. Well, let's just rotate it towards us. No, that's away, towards us. And we see, much like the other side, we've got the two markers, that one. But this one's got four. That is the top marker. That is up. So as long as you put that up the top like that, the orientation of everything else revolves around that, like this. That's either the front or the back. You can decide either way. You can, however, fortunately, adjust your blueprint based on the, 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 the location of the projector and where you want the projection to be. You can you know, move it further away, move it up, move it left, move it right. Uh, you can rotate it around all three directions as well. You can rotate it this way, you can rotate it this way, you can rotate it that way. Those are all settings of the projector. So we don't have to be too overly concerned. Um, the most important part is the orientation. And if we have a look here, see this the four barker is the top. No, I'll rotate it, and that is the front or back. In this case, I'm going to put that that side we're trying to project that way so I'm going to utilize that well, I'm going to call that front I think it might be but I'm not 100% certain on that uh, I'd have to look it up again on the on the, uh, the help pages but it took a long time for me to actually f figure that out um, I didn't entirely figure it out myself I did get a lot of help I did look it up there's a few good um, sites out there with information about these things so, computers for you, metal grids and computers and reactor, metal grids, computers and reactor components, I'm not sure, I think we've probably got plenty of those, but no, we need more computers. Give me a hundred computers, thank you very much, Assembler. And we can eliminate these for the moment. There's plenty of those. Alright. That's the start. Now, we need some uranium, so let's just get on over to our ingot container. Find some uranium. You? Ooh. Okay, yeah, well, just give me one. That's actually, no, that's actually more than what we need. We'll just put half of that back. It does not take a lot of power to run a projector. Hence why we're just using a small reactor here. 
Now I've actually oriented the reactor this way, mixing really nice sound, because it actually gives us uh, access to the terminal. So OK, and here's our projector here. Now, as you can see, we've got blueprints. And there's a few other settings which we'll look at at the moment. Now, we have to decide what blueprint we're going to review. So let's just come over here, press F10 to bring up our list of blueprints. And we need an atmospheric. No, that one's a little bit too advanced for here. That one could work. That's a... That's a minor? I can't see the drills on that. Heavy shuttle... Prepared for, for doing this, I haven't actually sorted out uh, what blueprint we were going to use. Okay. Okay. Yes, oh, here, what have we got here? Now that's a down facing mining platform. Space based. Space based. Ugly. Oh, sorry, did I say that? Atmospheric ball miner. Let's try that one. So let's just come back over here to our terminal. Okay, and I've just hit the wrong button here somewhere. Why on earth did that do that? Bring me back to that. Bear with me, we should have. I should resume our. There we go. Alright, so in our projector, go to blueprints. And we'll try the bore miner. So OK. Alright, and there's this insubstantial hologram. As you can see we've got four drill heads at the front. We've got atmospheric thrusters and we've got a connector at the bottom. And we've got this other cluster arrangement at the back here. I'll explain that. Let's just check the other projection first. Okay, control panel, projector, blueprints. I might check this one because I can't recall where the drills are on that. And that's because I can't see any drills on that. How do I, why did I call that a miner? There's no mining capabilities. Shocking, shocking, shocking. So, we'll go back to the first one. Projector, remove the old blueprint, add a new blueprint. And go to that one. Alright, that will work. Now we need to push it forward. Let's try to determine what we're going to link to. 
and if we push it forward we can actually sprue, add this sprue, or make this sprue, attach to it potentially right on top of the cockpit if we could if not we can do it on top of the reactor or even the cargo, either one so we need to push it forward I would say Forward. Let's try projector. Now, these are the settings. As you can see, they are now available. Forward offset. Now, let's see. Yep, forward is positive. So that mark that I showed you, the two lines, is literally the forward indicator. That's put that to the front and. Moving it forward will move it along that or at that axis there. What do you mean out of bounds? How far did that go? Got to go a little bit further yet. <laughs> Looks like we might be dropping this sprue onto our connector here, our conveyor junction there at this stage. So we we'll go forward another three. And then go up, I'd say two, I guess. So we'll try that. This is the fun part, getting this aligned properly. So forward another three, it's so up to 17. And now vertical, we'll go up. Oh no, we're actually negative, so we're going up. We'll go up three. And let's see what that's done. If that's too far, I think it was only two. Yes, I think it was only two. Okay, so we have to bring it back down. That's, that's not bad for a first attempt. So bring it back down. Okay, now for precision here, this, this is a little trick that you can use in pretty much all the sliders within your terminals. Rather than trying to slide the back of walls like this and get it exactly right, which in some cases you can, in this case it's, a, it's not a problem. But if you want a little bit more precision, you can... Oh, no, we won't bring you back. Press Control and click on it, and it brings up a set value. So now we can literally just type the value we want in there. Um, most of the sliders will allow that. Some of the sliders are... A floating point. They take a, a decimal. They can take a decimal value. And what? I think it was the negative. I just typed in. It's not supposed to trigger off a standard negative key, minus key, but it did. I mean, we should have that back shortly. I'm gonna have to change my key bindings. I think. Uh, now, where was I? Ah, yes. Some values you can put in do take a, a decimal point. Uh, decimal number and that's where that setting comes in very very handy excellent or is it are we still down too far no no we're not wonderful so as you notice that is touching right on that connector and that connector is a lot more substantial than the rest of the projection that's to indicate that that is weldable. It's touching something and that these out here, it won't let you weld them. It's got no support. This is supported because it's touching this sprue that we set up so it's showing that you can weld it. Now there is and this is an advantage that I would recommend, highly recommend people using. When you actually start building from a hologram, from a projection as the build progresses you can end up with other parts on that what was a projection that gets welded and that will then act as a sprue or a support point for more parts of the hologram and you can very inadvertently and very easily weld up a void you can have a spot inside that hasn't been welded up or a component that hasn't been fully completed because a sprue got welded up or another object got welded up and worked as support for the next part of the hologram and your welder couldn't then reach the first part. That is a bit of a problem, um, especially when welding by hand. 
Now, what I have found is quite an advantage is the setting in the projector. We touched on it briefly, I mentioned it as we went past. This show only buildable. If we click, click that, you'll notice if we have a look behind, so over here behind where you can just see the projection, it disappears. It comes back, disappears. Now, it's not that it's disappeared, it's just not visible. Okay, that one, it's a bit more advanced feature. It means once it's finished projecting, uh, finished when you're finished building it, the projection is actually still there, but overlaid onto the actual physical object. Leaving it turned off like this means that as you build a part up, it's no longer being projected. Um, so um, I actually do leave that turned off myself, but I also turn this show only buildable turned on. Now, if we go back over here and have a look then the part that I was mentioning before, the part that is more substantial, is the only part that's now visible. Because that is the only part that you can actually weld. You can't weld any of the rest of it, so it's stopped it. Now, if we just go and grab some basic components, now for that we'll need some of that, some of that, some of that, and some of that. So let's come over here, and I'll just touch it, just briefly touch up the roller. Bingo. And that's just showing exactly what I'm talking about. If you have a look in here, you notice we're going to be flat out get, getting that in there now to weld. Because all this other stuff's just popped up. Fortunately we can just say it. Alright. But yeah, all this other stuff just popped up as soon as, as soon as that became substantial because it now can act as a support for the next parts, which is some light armor blocks, uh, a small conveyor to turn a corner, uh, and one of the welders, well, one, of the welders, one of the drills. So we do have to be careful as we're welding and as we're building from a projection, but it is a very nice way to build a, an item rather than trying to build it from scratch. If you've got something that you've made, maybe you made in a, in a creative game, um, you can create a blueprint for it, you can then load it into a survival game through a projector, um, and then you can enjoy that same creation in your survival game um, once you've built it up. And see, there we go again. Oh yeah, okay, that didn't want to, didn't want to build the sprue up. So I find, for myself at least, I usually just tap it real briefly with my welder. That way I can then see what else it's going to to uh, connect to and what else pops up in part of the, whole, uh, the projection. And then I can very carefully target the one item that I'm going to build up rather than randomly just welding and risking eventually having a void there that a conveyor tube that doesn't get welded up fully and all of a sudden your conveyors are not working and you have to dismantle this part of your ship to be able to find that one part that's not working and weld it up properly. So you know, projections and blueprints I find are quite an advantage, they're a lot of fun to work with. Um, I like using them. Then again I like creative games as well because it lets me just experiment with designs and ideas and as you saw from my blueprint list it's quite extensive, probably got way too much stuff there, but yeah, I do need to probably sort it out. And now we're going to have fun getting to that block in behind. Too sensitive. Just trying to get to our drill. It's actually stuck underneath the hitbox for the drill with that. I've just remembered you could actually basically push yourself into the projection and it's 
that projection no longer becomes a part of the target. There we go, that's alright. fully fixed all the hitboxes, I mean, the selections. I thought they had fixed most of them, but... It's still difficult to select some items. Yeah, trust me, blueprints are a lot of fun. Not this thruster. They do actually make building things a little bit easier. Not necessarily faster, but... not even pointing to the atmospheric thrust, isn't that great?
<laughs> okay. Well, that was a bit of an oversight, wasn't it? We forgot to keep an eye on our hydrogen. Fortunately, we're very close to the ground, so it was not a big drama. There we go. Let's just recharge these tanks. Not quite, Richard. Excellent, excellent. Where's the door? Got it. Okay. Alright, well, I mean, as you can see, it's not that bad to weld these all up. Uh, it's just going to be a bit time consuming. Um, but I'm going to stop this uh, beginner's guide at this stage. Uh, rather than you sitting there watching me just build this all up, you've seen the, the basics of how the projector works and how to weld it up. Um, we'll just quickly turn that uh, come back here see as you can see it, it actually is adding it to this grid and that's because of the sprue over the top there that we set up uh, we will chop that free eventually and if you notice the projector actually tells us what else is still required to to build um, so we've got well, so far we've gotten 50 out of 118 blocks which you know that's not too bad we're nearly halfway there We've got 15 more armor blocks, two gyroscopes, and so on. It actually shows you exactly what you need. And if we had our refinery fully set up, we could actually just go and go over there and tell it to build small blocks and build this and that and that. And it would just generate all the materials necessary so that you'd had all the materials in a cargo container and you knew you had all the materials necessary to build this whole object up. Um, Let's just turn that off so we can have a look at its progress so far against over the whole thing. And as you can see, where we've welded up, it certainly does not look insubstantial, whereas what's left to build is a bit more substantial, and what can't be built yet is this really light uh, hologram. So I'm going to stop this uh, stream at that point. Um, rather than you watching me fully build this up, you've, you've, I've shown you the first start of it, and I'd suggest you definitely loading into the game, um, even if you followed this episode, and build a basic projector and sprue setup rig like this. Um, you can download some blueprints, plenty of blueprints on the workshop, you can download them, um, well, sorry, subscribe to them, that way they'll make them available to you in this list. Um, hence, if you scroll right, to, if I scroll right to the bottom, there's these couple of items down here. These are my own creations on the workshop, so when I uploaded them, I'm automatically subscribed to them anyway. Um, but that's a small grid. I could have just as easily used that. Um, so yeah, you, by all means, check out the workshop. Uh, you might find some nice creations there. So there's some very nice shipbuilders out there and creators out there. Uh, you can subscribe to them, so they'll show up in your blueprints list build yourself a nice little blueprint welding rig like this or just paste it into a creative game and have a look at it but yeah by all means experiment play around with it get the feel for the art of welding up a ship from a blueprint um, if I had a, a small a, a large grid well, I'm sorry if I had a ship a welding ship using 
the large ship based welders, not my hand welder, you can just get really close proximity to it and just hit your welders and hold them on and, and it's got quite a range, it'll actually weld up quite a lot of objects within range of that of those welders. The hand welder is a little bit more scalpel like, very very precise, it doesn't really go out too much outside of that, although as you heard it clang, and I use the term for a noise, not for a destruction, uh, it did clang a few times as it was um, setting these blocks up from over the here, it was sort of clanging and, and setting the basis for that, 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 so it's got like a four or five block range. So yeah, by all means, play around with the projector uh, and blueprints. I will most likely weld this up um, offline so that next episode uh, we'll have this all ready here. I won't de uh, unattach it, I'll leave it fully attached and we'll uh, pick this up next episode where we'll detach it and use it to start mining all of these. However, before we mine all of that, we're going to expand our rudimentary refinery over here by adding some more refineries and assemblers. Uh, that way when we mine this we'll be mining large quantities of ore and we'll actually have something there that can process it including probably some arc furnaces. But for now by all means have fun with space engineers, happy engineering and I look forward to uh, discussing some more beginners tips and beginner guides and introducing you to various aspects of the game in our next episode. Thank you for dropping by.